cardiovascular screening throughout the entire session, session one and session two, you will uh, hear from our leading investigators in the field of cardiovascular disease talking about various aspects of, potential aspects of screening. And I'd like to start with my three slides. That's all I have. And I'd like to conclude with what I hope everybody will agree. This is a, a schematic mission statement of our society. And I don't doubt even a second that everybody's dream is like that. This is our dream. This is where we would like to go. Where we are today is here. We are in the midst of a chaos with about a million uh, cardiovascular, unpredicted cardiovascular events every year in the United States. Overall, worldwide, according to WHO, about 19 million. We really don't know what the number is. Mm -hmm. This is where today is perhaps the starting point of tomorrow, where we would like to be, where we'll be able to properly screen, and I uh, named it VP screening, and VP stands for vulnerable patient, vulnerable plaque, this is something that everybody's care. Still, this is going to be a very costly era for all of us who know how expensive these diagnostic techniques are. The next era that we anticipate and we wish again to see is the era that we would have preventive and pro prophylactic measures in place for a wide use without having to do all those of advanced uh, intravascular invasive techniques. Perhaps with one or two biomarkers we would be able to put patients or apparently healthy subjects vulnerable or at risk uh, on this, what I call polyfill. I borrowed this from the publication that I'm sure you all have seen. Uh, and there has been about 140 uh, patents from pharmaceutical company on polypill, and that tells me that this is perhaps the future that we will be leading to. And the era after that, this is again a next level of dream for all of us that we would like to have a much cheaper therapy for prevention of cardiovascular disease. This is the work that by Dr. Hansen, Dr. Shaw, Dr. Nelson, and about 20 more investigators uh, currently actively being pursued after the revolution of atherosclerosis being known as an inflammatory disease. When we will have a vaccine against atherosclerosis, I don't know, but I know the answer is when we all put our best into it. This would be a collaborative project just like development of a human genome project as well as a vaccine against HIV project. We will have more on this later. Now this is where we are, e area of VP screening. And I want to go to the next slide. Uh, my colleagues at the uh, AEHA uh, Public Relations helped me to create this name, the National Screening for Heart Attack Prevention and Education Program and we call it SHAPE, and we would like to call America to get in shape. This is not just a fancy word. You all have seen us, uh, particularly myself, under the auspice of Dr. Willerson, Dr. Sells, and others from University of Texas, Texas Heart Institute, have had six vulnerable plaque and vulnerable patient symposia. Today, this is my belief that we have sufficient diagnostic and uh, uh, tools that can help us to go through that pathway. Now what is this path? What is this pyramid is going to tell us? We have been taught by NCEP and national guidelines how to treat risk factors. The message here is while we respect risk factor therapy, we believe that the way to go after identification of vulnerable patients is not focusing on risk factors, rather than focusing on risk markers. Risk markers show accumulative effect of risk, known risk factors and unknown risk factors with, that we will learn in future. This is where the bottom of the pyramid should focus on. The next level with, with the pioneering work 
of Dr. Rundberger, Dr. Fuster, and others. Now we have imaging that is opening our way for seeing inside the plaque and seeing the whole body as a subject, not only a coronary artery or one single plaque. That is where our next step will be. And we are opening the way to the third level, which is intravascular, and we will hear about that in ultimate IVUS meeting tomorrow um, uh, here in this hotel. I would like to summarize my presentation that America Get in Shape is about a proposal that we would like for our faculties to start brainstorming. This is not a definite guideline. This is something that we've concluded after six conference and meeting that we've led this uh, uh, group of interested scientists for identification of vulnerable plaque and vulnerable patient. I also have a small announcement to make, and that is our new way of communicating with all people in the field. I, I cannot uh, overemphasize on the value of getting, uh, having easy access to information with the fact that knowing yet last year, 2003, we had 4,000 393 papers published in the field of atherosclerosis. We had 1,500 some patents published in the field of atherosclerosis. And more than 20,000 abstracts. How can we get to, to have access to what we want in a, re, in a, in a uh, timely manner? That was the Atheroline project. The last but not least is we honored our pioneering investigators in the field of vulnerable plaque and vulnerable patient, Dr. Uh, Mahler, who uh, brought this name of vulnerable to us, and Dr. Willerson, who led the field of vulnerable plaque and vulnerable patient for three decades. We have uh, uh, three winners that will be uh, winning this award, $2,000 cash, based on the votes from our faculties uh, today. I would like to conclude that AEHA is a virtual organization that belongs to everybody. We, ha we have the smallest office next to the largest medical center in the world, that is Texas Medical Center, and we are there to help whoever can help us. The group who built this is not one person or a few who are sitting here. We have uh, been very gifted, that's the word I can say, with Dr. Cassell's leadership and his grant that gave rise to this work and a large group of people that you're seeing here and some more at Texas Heart Institute and University of Texas. And I'm going back to our dream and I would like to invite our first speaker, Dr. Willerson, who's uh, honoring us with his uh, remarks. Dr. Willerson.